Felix here, and welcome to this live stream jobs morning, followed by Fed Chair Powell speaking. I'll be live streaming both, and I'll guide you from one live stream to the other uh, as we as we do that. So, what's happening here with the data out this morning? Well, let me um, let me open it up for you. Uh, of course, none of the following is financial advice. You know that by now, and we've got data, 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 and here it is. Jobless claims, 222,000, we're expecting 230 to 40. Ouch. Continuing jobless claims, 1473. This is the trend we've been seeing, is that the long-term unemployed kind of creep up a little, but the people who are for the first time claiming unemployment benefits are, are less and less and less and less. So this is kind of the mixed data that we've had the last couple of weeks. Let me just take a screenshot of this. Uh, we've got some other data and info to look at as well before Fed Chair Powell starts talking in pretty much exactly half an hour. Uh, that's definitely an event that will move markets. So make sure you are tuned in for that. And then good morning, everybody. Uh, Stefan, Kyle, um, Aero Driver, Eric, Andrea. Good morning to all of you. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. I appreciate your curiosity as to what's happening with the market at the moment. It's all macro. So take it from an old macro economist uh, here that uh, this stuff matters. So we've got 40, 222,000 people claiming joblessness for the first time. It's a silly word, joblessness, I always think. We were expecting 240 to 230 uh, for the continuing jobless claims, 1.473 million, which is an increase. So let me just make this color code this. Uh, this is up, and that's a good thing. And then the initial jobless claims are lower than expected, and that's a bad thing for the market. Now, the four-week average is also down. So I don't really see how this is good news. I, I, I just don't think this... I don't really think that the movements up are enough. It's a little bit more than last for the last set of data we had. This is up sort of 35,000 or something like that, 36,000. It was about 25,000 by memory or so from the last one. And so that's kind of heading in the right direction, but still not really. If you look at what inflation is doing here, this is CPI. Uh, look at where that is. This is a really, this is a chart going back to World War II, 1940s here. So we are really fully fledged kind of at levels of the 1970s, except that this chart is highly misleading. Why? because the government has redefined inflation in that time period, which means if you applied the 1970 me measures of inflation to today, we would also be up here somewhere. We would be in that kind of 15 percentage rate range. So in reality, they've been messing with numbers as governments tend to, to make themselves look a little bit better. And, you know, uh, all of that. Nice haircut. Thanks very much. I had a shearing yesterday. I think it was long overdue. Um, Andreas says, Andreas says, remember to hit the like button, absolutely smash that. And we've got Satoshi himself on here. Um, this is his brother, Helix. <laughs> People are working so they can fight inflation. Well, actually, it would help us if they, if they weren't working. That would actually fight inflation. So if you are wanting to be selfless, then claiming unemployment benefits <laughs> would be the way to go. That isn't a serious suggestion, obviously, but uh, you know what I mean. So how's the market reacting to this? So we can look at the live market here. We can pull up a live QQQ chart as well. Extended hours so far. GameStop's up 5%. That's always a bit of an alarm bell for me, I must say, when stuff like that goes up. When the rubbish floats to the top, you know you're in trouble. Um, yeah, and a lot of tech actually down a little, but not all that much. It's sort of a, an undecided morning. But QQQ was at zero when I uh, looked at half an hour ago. It's now down 0.35%. So if we look at a live chart here, that's actually new. I wanted QQQ. There we go. Uh, this is QQQ on a minute by minute basis. And you see what's happened, right? When did we get the data out? The data came out here. Uh, that dotted pink line is when we got the data and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out that we've dropped from announcement to right now about 0.2 percentage points. It was 0.3 percentage points. So that's a significant drop in, in a normal world, in a normal market. That's sort of as much as the um, you know QQQ moves in a whole day and it does that here in four minutes. So 
great start to the morning? No. Is it going to relieve the Fed from the pressure to raise interest rates? No. I think the 0.75% rate hike is more likely than ever. Uh, now, is Powell going to tank the market in, in half an hour? I mean, I'll be, we'll be live streaming that. Well, it really depends on whether he says anything new. So look, look at that. Wow, look at that number. That's, um, that's a big change here this morning. So the market, the Fed futures were um, hoping this wasn't going to go this way. But let me show you this set of data here. Uh, if you don't like data, by the way, this probably isn't the channel for you. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bit of a data-driven driven person. Uh, that's, that's really all that matters. So what have we got here? This is the probability from the ZQU2 contract expiring on 13th of September of where rate, rates are going to go. This is a 0.5% rate hike. This here is a 0.75% rate hike. 82% now. That's the highest we've seen on this. Uh, yesterday, it was 77%. A week ago, it was 75%. A month ago, it was 68%. So <clears throat> we are ramping up uh, as we're getting closer. This is the last set of really big data here, or maybe not quite the last, one more next week, but one of the last to really show that the Fed has achieved more than we thought and therefore would slow down their rate hikes. And this seems now very, very unlikely here. Um, Danny dislocated his shoulder. Yeah, what did you do that for, Danny? What was what, what were you up to? You were you were hanging on uh, on something or uh, anyway? Um, speedy recovery. I, I I wish you good decision on the haircut, says Margaret. Well, it always makes you wonder, isn't it? When people say to you, "Yeah, that, that, that's a good haircut. You look good." It kind of makes you think. Well, they've been thinking for some weeks now that you look kind of pretty horrific or like a sheep, and they were too polite to say it. That's always what I think. <laughs> ECB yet to announce the rate hike. Yes, that should also be happening um, this morning, basically the same time I think that Powell speaks. So I'll be I'll be streaming Powell rather than, than the ECB, because I think for us that actually matters a little bit more. But no, we haven't got it yet. Oh, no, here we go. There it is, breaking literally this second. ECB raised to, oh, my God, 0.75% uh, rate hike from the ECB. You know, the, the probably most conservative central bank out there in the sense of raising rates. They have finally done it. Um, one from 0% to 0.75%. Uh, it's unprecedented uh, tightening. It's the first time they've ever done that. Uh, serious stuff. Serious stuff. Again, the market isn't going to like that. Uh, and, and Europe is in a much, much worse situation than the US, actually. And this is the reason for it. Where is it? Uh, here it is. It's, it's the US dollar. The US dollar is a privilege. The US dollar means that the U.S. is buying commodities at cheaper prices because the dollar is so strong, whereas the euro, which has collapsed, um, is just not worth all that much. And therefore, the Europeans are paying like basically double the increase that the Americans are paying. This is the EU. This is the U.S. of A. So that's a problem for Europe. The weak, the weak currency is a problem. And that's also why they're raising interest rates so much, because in a sense, it has a deflationary element because it will lift the euro a little bit and therefore it will make commodity imports a little bit cheaper. And Europe really needs commodity imports if you've been paying attention, gas and, and, and everything else, uh, oil, aluminium, anything energy intensive as they're running out of electricity over there. Um, Andrea says, I say mallet, Felix. I, I'm sorry, Andrea, to disappoint you there. Uh, trading too hard. Uh, you had a seizure. Oh, crikey, Danny. Okay, I hope you're all right. Uh, my cat has ha, used to have seizures, seizures, and she's on CBD. Works a treat. So there is some, you know, some drug advice here from from me. It's a huge fire sale with thirty percent off. Is it? What's thirty percent off? Well, the market is unlikely to enjoy this. We are down, but it's a moderate response to it. Now, has the market fully woken up? Quite possibly not. Uh, and also the market needs to price in what's happening in, in Europe here, which, you know, that global interest rates are going to go up more this month than likely ever before. Uh, and, and that's not good for global demand. Uh, European inflation is at 9.1%, which is pretty staggering stuff. 
Uh, even if you exclude energy, that's still over 4%. And I mean, always bear in mind these numbers are massaged, so you can probably pretty much double them to get a more realistic expectation here. Let's have a quick look at the um, um, European set of data here, because it does matter, even if you're purely a US investor. Um, Queen Elizabeth's doctors are okay. That's not what we're here for. European stocks fluctuate after ECP implements the rate hike. Oh, you'd expect that, wouldn't you? You would expect uh, this chart to low. Equity valuations hover at the lowest level since the start of the pandemic. Look at that. That's the severity that the market is realizing of the recession about to hit Europe in the face like a brick. Uh, this is going to be a little unpleasant, unfortunately. Now, recessions are wonderful times for stock investors because we can buy, you know, all these great European stocks. There are not that many of them, but there are some. In 2020, you would have paid 18 times um, forward PE. Uh, now you are paying only 11 times forward PE. Now, which is better? I, I ask you. Well, I think it's fairly obvious which one's better. So actually, stock investors, as long as you have an income, should be very, very happy. If you don't have an income, get one. That's what I say. Uh, or secondly, you just have to have some patience. If you want to get an income, well, I can give you an income. I teach you how to trade options and make money. We're up 113% so far on our options portfolio this year. We're making very, very nice, consistent profits. And um, yeah, the 2% down for this month is because we, we took some early losses to uh, de-risk, which is always a good thing to do. Uh, so that's going to turn into a positive number in the next couple of days as, as we, we, we close out some of the more profitable trades. Do you think coffee futures are in hot water? I, uh, I can't say that I'm a coffee futures trader. I, I really couldn't tell you that. I mean, orange juice, you know, I'm obsessed with that one. That's actually gone up. I, I'm really not sure what, what, what the harvest nature is of, of that particular product. But we can see markets down moderately. Um, so Powell is either going to come out and do one of three things. He's either going to be, VIX is up as well, now 1%. He's either going to come out and say, uh, and, and you know bang his fist on, on the floor and say, um, well, on the floor, on the table, if he's got one. It's one of those funny discussion things. He might not have a table. <laughs> and getting slightly sidetracked here. Um, and and you, could, you could A, repeat what he said before, in which case the market's going to be like, well, that was better than expected because we thought he would say something terrible, in which case the market might enjoy it. Or he could come out with stronger language uh, than before, in which case the market's going to hate it. Uh, I think those are the two options. I know that as I said there was a third, but I don't think there really is a third. It's very unlikely that he's going to come in with softer language, given the economic data that we're seeing here um, and given what the ECB has just done. And remember, these guys were all just together in Jackson Hole. And, you know, they dug a great big hole together and all decided that they should raise interest rates in tandem uh, at a very, very aggressive level. So the market's still down here since that was announced about 0.2% or so, maybe 0.3, bobbing up and down here. And that, of course, isn't wonderful news for us as investors. Um, uh, Simon and Chirac think he's going to come out guns blazing. Well, he isn't somebody who will tell you, well, yes, we're definitely going to do that at the meeting because he always says we make decisions at the meeting. We are going to evaluate all the data and so on. But he's got quite a bit of data to go on now that is basically not what he wants it to be, right? Really, really not what he wants it to be. The initial droplets claims here, uh, lowest level since um, since May. Look at that, right? That's That's pretty low. If I go out a year, we are at pretty low levels here. We are coming down. He wants that number to go up. So we are just going completely in the opposite direction. This trend reversal we saw from April, which was giving us hope, was giving the market hope, has basically been turned around. And why is that? Because if you have more people who are unemployed, you've got less demand. Less demand means you get less inflation. That's very, very simple. Now, next week, uh, what are the big items? Well, on Tuesday, we get the inflation rate. And that's the last big set of data really before the, the Fed decision, that and, and PPI, sort of the same thing, really. Um, that's really what's what's going to be driving them. Um, and, and I think then we basically have to kind of hold our breath till um, the Fed rate decision on the on the 21st here. Uh, they do go into silent mode. They have this, this, this uh, period where they're not allowed to make any statements, I think, from Saturday onwards, which is why every Fed president and their dog and their cat 
is all over CNBC at, at the moment. What time will JP Morgan be speaking? Uh, at uh, just after three o'clock. So I'll do the switcheroo to that, that live stream in 15 minutes here. Um, will they announce more rate hikes today? Uh, no, um, no. Europe has done it, but the EC, the, the, the Fed doesn't do it till the 21st of September. Those dates are set in stone. Very unusual that they have an emergency meetings or something like that. I don't really think that. Uh, MC says container freight, lumber, copper, et cetera, all down. This will hit pricing. CPI read will be lower. And I agree with you on that. I do. Inflation compared to where it was last year is going to come down because if we could find, I'm not sure I can, uh, the, um, oh, I'm not sure where that chart is, but there is a chart somewhere that basically shows you that last October and November, um, Inflation rates were going up particularly fast. No, sorry, I've got too many, too much data on this sheet. I can't find it. Uh, and, and therefore, it's much, much harder for it to go up now. And given that oil is at lower levels than it was at the peak, it's at $88, right? Remember, it's at like 120, something like that, 125. And so that's significantly lower, right? It's a third lower. So that's disinflationary. And the same can be said for quite a lot of other stuff like, like lumber and a lot of other commodities. Um, so therefore, that helps with inflation because inflation is a comparative item. It's not a, we don't look at the nominal number of the index of inflation. We look at how much has it gone up by compared to this time last year. Lumber will tumble because nobody's building houses, says Danzo. Absolutely agree with you on that. Uh, although Europe it might, might, might be burning it <laughs> for, for heat. <laughs> Maybe that's what they'll be doing with it. Uh, Lagarde speaking right now. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Margaret, for that. I, I yeah, I, I don't think we need to fully listen to that. But it, essentially, Europe has just raised their interest rate by 0.75 percent. So that's going to be a, a pretty significant event, historic jumbo hike for for the Europeans. Uh, now they haven't raised interest rates for absolute ages, so therefore this was really necessary. They were at zero percent interest rate still, so they've gone to 0 0.75, which isn't really all that high, is it, considering that their inflation is at 10 percent. So really, uh, if you think that through, they'd need to raise rates by this amount another 10 times or so to catch up with inflation, which is very, very unlikely for them to do that. How damaging for EU economy will this gasless winter be, says Stefan. It really depends on the weather. Like literally watch the weather channel this winter if you want economic advice. <laughs> because if it gets really cold, then they're in trouble. If it gets really cold, a lot of the biggest factories in Europe will basically have to shut down. You know, your aluminium plants, your, your big chemical manufacturers, your um, fertilizer manufacturers, all these guys who use tons of energy will have to close down. And that would then have an impact on what? Well, the car industry won't have enough aluminium unless they're imported and, you know, all that kind of stuff. There's a knock-on effect. It also causes damage in the long run to the kind of economic industrial substance of Europe, because once you close one of those major plants, they tend not to come back. Because actually to switch, I did a video on that a couple of days ago, to switch, in, in, to switch an aluminium plant back on costs you tens of millions of dollars. Uh, just to turn it back on. So typically nobody wants to do that once it's turned off. So therefore, Europe has two options. Either they just subsidize the heck out of everything uh, for the next probably two or three winters. This is not a one-year story, guys. The infrastructure will take too long to be put into place. Uh, but if we get a really mild winter, Europe might just be all right. Uh, that's really the, 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 the question here. Andrea saying one of the biggest steel production plants in Italy stopped production today. Uh, thanks for sharing that, Andrea. And that's, of course, exactly the kind of story that is, causes problems. Because once you stop that, maybe you start laying people off. Is it ever going to come back when you can import the steel cheaper? Well, but then in five or 10 years, you realize that whoever your steel supplier was is, is suddenly your foe just with gas. And then you're in trouble, right? Is Europe trapped between the US-Russia geopolitics? Well, the Europeans seem to be embracing it uh, just as much. So I don't think that's really quite the way I see that, uh, Mohammed. Uh, I, I think Europe is very, very much um, driving this, although the US, of course, as always, is funding and supplying the military side much, much more than, than, than anybody. But yeah, it's, it's, it was a silly mistake to be entirely energy dependent for gas on, on, on Russia. It seemed so easy. Um, 
and Russia had never had, well, hasn't been a problem for for the Germans, particularly since you know 1989. So they're, you can kind of see where they're coming from. Uh, the last German Chancellor, as well, uh, Merkel, uh, grew up in Eastern Europe. She obviously spoke fluent Russian, and so you can kind of see where these relationships get, ships get built. But what's the lesson? Diversify, folks. It's the same thing. If you've got something in your portfolio that's 30 or 40 percent of your portfolio, you need to do something about that. What do you need to do about that? Well, the best thing to do is just to make more money so you can diversify into other things without having to sell out of that first thing. That's the first thing I would say to you. And how can you do that? Well, I can, I can help you very much with that. Uh, if you go to uh, phoenixrentsalog slash coaching, provided you're starting with at least a five-figure portfolio, we get you there. We help you to get you there. How? Well, we make you Money, money. We teach you how you can independently trade and make money. I'm up a hundred and what is it? What is the number? Let me open it up. 109% or something like that at the moment. Where is it? Here it is. These are all the trades you got open at the moment. 100 and ooh, 113. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I think we just adjusted the fee structure. I think that's has something to do with it as well. So we're up at 109, 110% or so uh, here on, on the year. This is since the beginning of January. And people always think, well, those kind of returns are impossible. You must be taking incredible risk. And it's the opposite is true. It really isn't. It's, it's, I always think, well, do you think JP Morgan sits around and thinks, we've got a great bank, we make 8% a year, like retail investors No, you're getting screwed, you're getting taken advantage of. The only way to fix that is to become confident and to be able to do this stuff yourself because financial advisors and financial products will only ever get you so far. Um, James says, fertilizer plants are being shut down in Europe. Yep, that's going to cause food costs to go up even more. Um, though generally speaking, I'm not a big fan of chemical fertilizer it's a fairly horrific thing in the long run that doesn't actually help anybody at all but yeah i can i can see what you're saying there so qqq is uh, is down um 0.36 percent here in pre-market you have too many thumbnails in my sub page stop it um, well, I, I, what do you mean? I should put out less videos. Is that what you're saying? Well, you could unsubscribe if they really bother you. That's what I would re recommend. Uh, Euro, US dollar uh, to go up because of the speech of Lagarde. Well, much more because of the 0.75% um, interest rate. Like, let me just, uh, Forex, Euro, US dollar. No, they'll, they'll all show us the same thing here. So look, we're up uh, over the $1 mark again, slightly. So, so parity is, is, is back essentially here. That's the, that's the life chart. And that's obviously the reaction to the um, oh, Fed's power speech 910. Oh, that's very clever, isn't it? Oh, they got that in here. Uh, so yeah, that's, we were expecting that, that the, the, the euro would rally somewhat. Because now if you're holding euros, you're no longer getting penalized. Like when I hold uh, more than, I think, 50,000 euros in cash in my bank account, I get an email that says, if you don't remove that money in within two days we will charge you interest that's the crazy world we live in in europe uh, same in japan so we will are now out of the the zero interest rate zone and that will obviously help attract a little bit more money into the eurozone there is no such thing as too much felix stefano you are very kind there, there probably is there is a there is a limit to everything even if it's good <laughs> uh, it's a bit like chocolate or something isn't it there, you, you can have too much of, of, of a good thing um but very kind of you to say so we've got about six minutes until we jump over to jay powell and his uh kato institute speech that's starting in a couple of minutes and we'll jump over that with this live stream from one to the other yeah that's what how we we do it around here so don't be surprised when this live stream ends there will be a suggestion for the next live stream with jay powell live you click on that and you join me on that and and that's going to be going to be a riot uh, and a party and i'll give you my commentary and analysis as as he talks to see tell you what how that affects markets and so on do you think this decreases the chances of a 75 percent rate hike says illy no and if you look at the market how the markets just priced that in 82 percent probability now of a 75 percent 0.75 percent rate hike rather uh, and that's the market the the rather smart end of the market uh, the the fed fund futures uh, that are you know, it's, this is a this is a tr trading based thing. This is not some sort of clipboard wielding, um, you know, Michigan consumer survey or something like that. The Danzo, the pound is also severely under pressure. That's the next uh, problem child in Europe. Uh, UK has got a 
a load of issues with inflation, particularly. Uh, JP Morgan thinks inflation might go as high as 22% in the UK. 22%. I mean, that's really like Banana Republic stuff, isn't it? So can Norway gas soften the blow a bit with gas supply? Well, the Scandinavians are kind of looking after themselves first. Um, they will obviously sell what they can at market prices, uh, with the, whether they don't need, but uh, everybody tends to look inwards a little bit in these times. Uh, Stefan says, uh, hit the like button if you want more, Felix. I'm very much with you on that. Thank you very much. I much appreciate that. Are the energy prices in Europe really bad? Well, the futures are. So the, the energy futures are up about 10 times, 10x. Um, in Germany, for example, the cost of electricity is at a th the equivalent of $1,000 a barrel oil. I mean, serious stuff. But governments are subsidizing it. There are significant bailouts of energy companies. So the energy companies are losing money. Um, and then the government bails them out. Uh, secondly, they are looking at subsidizing consumers or freezing energy tariffs, which again means they're going to have to shovel more money into the uh, energy grid type companies. Otherwise, they'll go out of business. So there is this massive, massive rescue of the whole energy market underway in Europe. And that's going to continue all winter and probably next winter and the winter after that as well. So it's going to cost a lot of money, uh, but they kind of want to shield well, they're voters from kicking them out of the office, really. I think that's what it's all about. Uh, Dan's are saying energy prices have gone up 50% in the UK, and they're going to go up even more when they're giving the poorest free money. Um, yeah, and that's typically how the UK has done it, right? The, the kind of winter gas allowance or something for the elderly, and obviously it's going to be extended to everybody. Um, any thoughts on what uh, J the might Jay Powell say, says uh, Luigi? Um, thank you very much for your kind comments there. Uh, well, yes, we're going to go over to Jay Powell in a couple of minutes. It's a, I don't know if it's a speech or if it's a Q&A, but it's like 40 minutes long. So we're going to get quite a bit out of that, I hope. Um, my expectation is he's going to stick to the script. He's going to say, you know, we are going to get to 2% inflation. We are committed and, you know, we haven't, we haven't quite achieved our job yet. I think something on that, on that front. But with him, it's the exact language he uses that moves markets. So I'll try to give you my analysis in, in, in typing uh, next to being able to watch him live. So I, I will be doing that and I should be putting on my, my headphones. And um, which these are like 20 years old, by the way. And um, when you buy good stuff, it lasts forever. QQQ chart, please. Um, Euro dollar. Do right, you want to see the QQQ? Well, yes, it's going down 0.64%. And that always happens around about this time because people wake up, people get to the office and they're like, whoops. Uh, so QQQ coming down quite a bit here. Now, one thing I should also do is lock into my brokerage because that's sometimes a mistake you do when you're on these lives and you're like oh let's talk about all the data and then you look at your your trading portfolio and uh, it's uh, abandoned ship so i just opened that here as well um righty hope so what i'll be doing right now is i'll switch us over to the live stream of jay powell you will get a little pop-up that'll take you over there so make sure you are joining us on that and let me just see. I'll put you the link here as well into the channel for anybody who is not able to find that. So here in the comment it is, that's the live stream link we're going to go to right here right now. So thanks for tuning in and see you in a couple of seconds on the next one.